Good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning worship with Pastor David Brown. I'm the pastor here at Sabina United Methodist Church, and it's a warm day. It's almost 50 degrees out, but it looks like it's going to be a very damp day. Let us pray. O God of the covenant, in the glory of the cross, your son embraced the power of death and broke his hold over his people. In this time of repentance, draw all people to yourself that we who confess Jesus as Lord may put aside the deeds of death and accept the life of your kingdom. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus said, Pick up your cross and follow me. What does it mean to carry a cross? Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. Your way is the road less traveled. How shall we carry this cross? Jesus said, Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor. Then come, follow me. We are called to love one another and to be willing to give something of ourselves to others. It takes strength to carry a cross, more than we have, sometimes more than we want. God of mercy, give us the strength to walk in your way, to carry the cross, to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 33. Jesus then began to teach his disciples. He taught them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. He taught them that the elders would not accept him. The chief priests and the teachers of the law would not accept him either. He must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke clearly about this. 
Peter took Jesus to one side and began to scold him. Jesus turned and looked at his disciples. He scolded Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You are not thinking about the things God cares about. Instead, you are thinking only about the things humans care about. And after calling the crowd together with his disciples, Jesus said to them, All who want to come after me must say no to themselves. Take up their cross and follow me. All who want to save their life will lose them. But all who lose their life because of me and because of the good news will save them. Why would people gain the whole world but lose their life? What will people give in exchange for their life? Whoever is ashamed of me and my word in this unfaithful and sinful generation, the human one will be ashamed of that person when he comes into the Father's glory. You know, a few years ago, okay, more than a few years ago, I remember as a kid, this comedian, his name was Smornov, and he was originally from Russia. Now, he had grown up under the old regime of the Soviet Empire, and when he migrated to the United States, he said some things were a lot different here. He said, in fact, some were hard to get used to. He said, one of the hardest things to understand was the American grocery store. One, it had so much more food than he was used to, and there was such a variety. And he said, one of the things that really stuck out to him was instant foods. He said, you had powdered milk, just add water, and it's milk. He said, you had powdered eggs and just add water and you have eggs. And he said, you also had instant potatoes. Just add water and you have mashed potatoes. He said, there was also that powdered orange juice. Tang. The drink of the astronauts. He goes, just add water. Just as magically as it could be, you have orange juice. He said, and then he saw something really confusing, baby powder. And he said, what a wonderful nation. Now, I know he was joking, but sometimes similarly, we compare people that same way about discipleship of Jesus Christ. People don't change instantly. Most times in their salvation moment, they need a full understanding to be completely repentant, renewed, and understand what salvation, to understand what it means to be lost and to be found. The salvation of believers is a process, not a destination. Whenever we are called to the most traditional sometimes, we expect a quick fix to sin. And according to this belief, one just gives their life to Jesus, and then, poof, immediately, they are substantive. They are quick and have this in-depth, miraculous change that happens. All their old habits are gone, and new habits just simply fine. Their attitudes are just completely different, and their character is transformed forever. And let's face it. When you start attending church, it's as if you were been entire been there the whole, your whole life. Sort of like going to that grocery store or Yonkov. Powdered Christian is suddenly available. It's like when you just walk in the door, the greeter hands you instant Christian powder. Just add water. And the disciples are made. It's just that simple, right? Well, there's only two problems to that. There is no instant Christian powder to even add water to. For one, being a disciple of Jesus Christ are not just add water, 
and then instantly you're reborn. To become a disciple of Jesus Christ is a slow process for many. There will be a lot of trials and there will be some suffering. And there will still be temptations. True life changes begins at salvation. It will take more than just a few seconds or even a minute or an hour. This journey is far from being instant. And the arrival of the destination will have plenty of detours along the way. But it is about training and trying and stumbling and even about dying. In the scripture I just read you, Jesus was telling the disciples that he would be rejected by the religious leaders and the peoples of the law and well, that he would suffer and die. But on the third day he would rise again. After hearing this, Peter takes Jesus and rebukes him. Now you must say one thing about Peter. This is someone he just acknowledged not that far back that it was the Messiah. And he's calling the Messiah to the side to explain to him what being the Messiah was? This doesn't make sense. See, Peter believed that the kingdom of God would be obtained instantly by force. See, Peter held a view of the world that was different from the kingdom of God. Jesus was speaking about a heavenly kingdom. Peter was talking about a worldly kingdom. Can you, as you listen to the story today, I want you to hear it with new ears and see Jesus through the eyes of Peter and the other disciples. They wanted to get rid of the notion you need to spend what you know is going to happen on Easter. Because the disciples don't know this yet. Take away from you the mindset that he is the Son of God. Strip your memory that he will die on the cross so that you can be forgiven of your sins. Forget that he ever said anything about love your neighbor or love your enemies. Now I want you to think of Jesus, the way Peter and the disciples did, as a military leader. Imagine for a moment that your country had been invaded, that your country was being ruled by godless men. Who would, you feel the tension in your country, and you yourself are getting ready for battle in your own way. You don't want to but you start thinking about a rebellion. Just you and this band of ruffians are going to attempt to overthrow the government. You must be sudden and unexpected in this strike. To be honest, the odds are well against you. You are have this strong, solid belief that God is on your side, that you will be victorious Hearing that, do you have a little different understanding of why Peter said what he did? Why he would rebuke Jesus? Peter was seeing Jesus through human eyes, through the resources of only men, expecting human results. Peter was thinking with limited resources when Jesus had the resources of heaven at his disposal. Jesus explained the true meaning of discipleship. What is fully meant to pick up your cross and to follow Jesus? I remember in the reading about in the dark days of World War II, Winston Churchill asked his people to take up their cross. He gave them a picture of a grand victory parade in Europe that would come at a great cost. First he explained about the, the Royal Navy 
how they would have to hold strong in the grand tradition of defending this island nation. They would have to defeat an armada that would threaten their very shores. He talked about the Royal Air Force, how they would have to defend England from the sky. They would be outnumbered and they'd be facing one of the most powerful air forces in the world. But they would have to stand their ground. They would cause the postponement and cancellation of that invasion if they were successful in controlling the skies. And he even talked about the Royal Army. Even though they had been pushed out of Europe at Dunkirk, almost into the English Channel itself, they had escaped the fight. They would help their by help by their countrymen in small boats and sail boats of all sorts to get them back to England so they could be prepared to defend this nation. But he also talked about the men and the women who would be needed to work in the factories and the coal mines. He talked about the coal miner who would be sweat and stained and sooty and faces darkened, working long hours to provide the fuel for a nation. How they would be needed as much as the soldiers and sailors, the marines and flyers. That working together they would be victorious at a time when the country did not see any way forward. Service does not always come with big fancy parades or ribbons. To show how the battle we face can be won, to be honest, we may not be the only one who knows where the battle is all the time. It is often at those humble acts of service that goes unknown and in secret, that provides us with the deepest sense of joy, the most fulfilling satisfaction. When only the only one who knows what we've done is just you and Jesus. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ? To be a disciple? To pick up your cross and follow Jesus wherever he leads? Well, we've been reminded about our baptism and what it means. To be baptized is to die of self. And to be reborn in Jesus Christ. Simply put, dead, buried, and out of the way. Your life is in Jesus. Your life is a reflection of Jesus Christ in the world. You are not ashamed to be called a follower, a disciple, or a religious freak. You represent Jesus. After Jesus explained the cost of taking up your cross, in Mark 9, 1, he says this, What I am about to tell you is true. Some who are standing here will not die before they see that God's kingdom has come with power. They will see the glory of Jesus in the empty tomb on Easter morning. They will see how Jesus rose from the dead on that third day. How Jesus will bear the sins of everyone upon himself to make us sinless. So that we can enter heaven. So what about you? Are you ready to take up your cross? Are you ready to follow Jesus wherever he may lead you? Do not forget that there will be a cost, and the cost will be high, and not everyone will be willing to complete and to follow Jesus without reservation and fall short of becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. For some, the cost will just be way too much for them to pay. But let's be honest, the ride will be worth every penny of it. Every suffering moment will be rewarded. Every sacrifice we make will be done in the name of Jesus. For we will see Jesus in every step we take. 
if we truly follow him. May we become prosperous and follow Jesus wherever he goes. Amen. Hey, as we go out into the world today, may the power of God move with you in acts of faith. Open your ears to God's divine revelation. Depend on God who is wise beyond the laws of this land. And do all the things so that all that is right and good permeates each day until we meet again. This is Pastor David Brown. On behalf of the people of Sabine United Methodist Church, have a great day. Amen.